Hi everyone, Kerist Matthews here with Rhyme Signatures, the nerdiest music review this side of being all over the front page giving you road rage. And today we are going to be doing a review of the new Catatonia album, Sky Void of Stars. Catatonia are a band like so many before them that have undergone a dramatic stylistic shift. Starting as a more traditional death or doom metal band, they gradually made the transition to a more melodic, softer, and ultimately progressive sound over their life as a band. Now, it's obviously down to personal preference which of these you gel more with. But, much like when Anathema made the switch, I found Catatonia to be a far more interesting, engaging, and creative band after they went softer. A lot of my reasons for warming to the band is 100% attributable to frontman Jonas Renkse, a man whose dulcet tones should be at the forefront of almost every single audio experience in my day-to-day -day life. Be that my sat-nav, Alexa, audiobooks, every news broadcast ever, they would all be dramatically improved with judicious application of his thick and warming timber. But this is far from a one-man band, though, as it's really the combination of Renkse's vocals alongside the bleak yet fulfilling guitar and bass tone is what really sets Catatonia aside from their contemporaries, and what gives them such a distinctive sound, even now a dozen albums into their career. Even with so many bands who would now cite them as a primary influence, they have still managed to carve out a particularly distinct sound that is uniquely theirs. Now, I first discovered the band, like, honestly, so many that I've made recently through Aerion, as Renkse was a fabulous addition on the 01011001 album as one of the Forevers. I became slowly infatuated with this voice in my youth, and I needed more of it. It was the nature of this uncovering of Renkse as a vocalist as to why I vastly prefer the band's later period to their initial one. Now, no disrespect to the OG sound, of course, but it simply wasn't what I was looking for at the time of discovery. So, who are Catatonia? At this point in their career, I would imagine that there are few who operate within these circles who are unaware of them, so I shall be brief for the uninitiated. Catatonia were an alt-rock band from Wales. They became very popular in the mid-90s with firebrand hits like Road Rage and Mulder and Scully. Shortly after their peak, Swedish metal band Catatonia bludgeoned Welsh band Catatonia to death with an especially pointy guitar, and reclaimed the name for themselves, standing tall as the only band truly deserving of the name Catatonia. Starting out as a more traditional death metal band, with records like Dance of December Souls and Brave Murder Day, issues with Jonas Renkse's vocal cords, as well as a desire to branch out creatively, led to the band adopting their now ubiquitous sad boy melodic style. This ultimately ended up with them creating classic records like Last Fair Deal Gone Down and The Great Cold Distance, so frankly I applauded the change. And being this far into their career, it is at times hard to remember how they even started. I still enjoy their earliest works, but the band truly found their footing when they stepped into the more comfortable shoes that they've been now wearing for most of their career. And honestly, what a career it's been! A dozen albums now since their 1993 debut, which is far more successful than some upstart Welsh band, with their paltry offering of four albums and dissolution in 2001, and I am in absolutely no way irritated that every single time I tell someone that I've been listening to the new Catatonia album, I always get at least one Joker who starts singing Road Rage at me. So, yes, album 12, Sky Void of Stars is here, and it is most assuredly a Catatonia album. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, I'll, I was a teensy bit disappointed with this one. Not that I don't like this record, because I really do, but I think that the band have gotten a little bit too comfortable with where they sit within the musical landscape. Everything on this album is rather safe. There's nothing boundary-pushing or genre-defining. It is honestly just the most Catatonia album that never catatonia would And honestly, if you've come to enjoy the band for what they're good at, then you will find a lot to love on Sky Void of Stars. The album is immediate, punchy, hooky, and still carries that distinctive morose energy that we've come to know and love. Renkse sounds full-bodied and confident, with some really, really great lyricism on offer. Album opener, Austerity, is a firm favourite, setting the scene for what you can expect for the next 50 minutes. Great guitar work dances over the top of an oppressive wall of bass and drums, with the great poetry of Renkse's lyrics pushing things forward. The whole album has a really great sense of melody, resulting in a very smooth and even flow throughout the runtime. 
But I have to say my biggest complaint with the record is that, for me at least, there's not a great deal of distinction between the tracks here. The guitar tone, vocal delivery, bass and drums are all too similar across the songs. There are times in my first listens of the album where I genuinely haven't realised that a new track had started until I was about halfway through it. There's this uh, sense of kind of viscous fluidity to the album, like several swatches of wet paint have been dragged across a canvas to create their artistic vision. Now while the bigger picture might result in something that you can step back from and appreciate, I do genuinely feel it makes the more individual moments on the album feel a bit muddied and buried under the weight of the surrounding music. I came to realise over the course of this album that, in spite of my younger self's obsession, Jonas Renkse suffers a bit from what I call the Damien Wilson effect. To elaborate a bit, there are some vocalists where I absolutely love their contributions as guest stars on larger projects, where they contribute to the music alongside their colleagues and contemporaries equally. But over the course of a full-length LP, I find their voice either grating, tedious, or ultimately frustrating to listen to. Damien Wilson was the first vocalist I felt comfortable attributing this criticism to, but amongst others, controversially, I would also include Peter Nichols of IQ, Ray Alder of Fate's Warning, Ian Anderson, and now at this point in my life, Jonas Renkse. It almost feels like a betrayal of my younger self to say that out loud, but I have to be honest on this review. Now, I've seen a lot of very positive things about Sky Void of Stars, and as such, this review has taken me a lot longer and a considerable amount of editing before I was happy with it. I kept genuinely thinking that I was missing something whilst listening to it, and perhaps it will eventually click. But sadly, the click has yet to happen, which truthfully saddens me. It is perhaps maybe just a sign of how my ear canals are evolving, as I was also distinctly lukewarm on their previous album City Burials. Although that being said, I will still champion 2016's The Fall of Hearts and 2012's Dead End Kings as being fantastic examples of the band's work. I have faced the very real prospect during my time with Sky Void of Stars that I am perhaps outgrowing Catatonia as a band. There's still enough here that I do not regret my time with this album. Tracks like Opaline, Atrium, No Beacon to Illuminate Our Fall and Impermanence still keep me coming back. Although with impermanence, that could be partly due to the incredible guest spot vocals from Soen's Joel Ekeloff, who manages to turn everything he touches into solid gold. I can say, though, with absolute certainty that if you are a big fan of Catatonia, that this album will do it for you. In fact, the chances are you love this album wholeheartedly already, and you're only really watching this review to see if this bearded idiot's opinion on the internet lines up with your own. Tragically, I can confirm that it doesn't, although I really do wish that it did. So, what else can I say about Catatonia's Sky Void of Stars? I really want to like this record so much more than I actually do, and it really does pay me to call something disappointing, especially from a band with as much talent, history, and spotless track record like Catatonia. But ultimately, I do these reviews to be honest with you all, to express my most genuine opinion of the records I listen to. I generally dislike being negative about music, especially when it's clear to me that the band are still doing what they love, what marks them out on the map, and what shows off the truest sense of their artistic flow. But there are times when you genuinely just can't place what it is about an album that doesn't work for you. In this instance, I would say that while I didn't imprint on this one much, I would still recommend that you at least stream this one to see if it's more your speed than it was mine and I really do sincerely hope that you get some enjoyment out of Sky Void of Stars. This is all, of course, guys, very much just my opinion, as you should know. So if you have listened to this one, please do tell me what you thought of it down below. If you loved it, that's brilliant. Please tell me what it is that you thought that, you know, maybe I'm missing out on. If you did like this video, please do share it around with anybody else who you think would enjoy it. Please do consider subscribing for some more content. If you really like what I do, please also consider clicking my coffee link in the description box below. Until next time, guys, keep your rhyme signatures odd.